flame of the light. Uh, I'm going to just use the book. <laughs> Page one. <laughs> Page 101, there you go. Claim of the light. I think most of you have seen it on my website. Uh, it's just a four sentence, it's written in correct grammar. It says that the claimant's knowledge of the live life is singular, because you are a singular person making this claim, with the claim of the life birth, or some people use the word activity. Now I have in my in my uh, office over 800 different claims of the life. Even though this was a base, I've got eight page claims of life. I got complete documents and histories of, of the uh, of their families going back to the 17th century. Some of them go back a thousand years. That they, they did all the research on their on their bloodlines and they're saying, well, I'm claiming my life now after this this long bloodline, and I don't want to be in the fiction. So I I got this big box of claims of life. Keep telling people, don't send them to me. They belong to you. They're your property. Mm -hmm. So this is merely just establishing your punctuated name, Pope Colin David, Hyper Wim, Pope Colin Miller, on this date, what day you are, what month you are, what year you are, uh, of these witnesses. And I have two witnesses that have to sign, and they both have to have claims of the life also, because dead people can't certify a life. So by when you do three of them, A, B does C, a, C does B, and B, C does A. So you do three at a time, and if you don't have claims of life, you're done. And you all have certified copies. Then, the second one says here, for this claim, this knowledge of the life birth is with the location. Well, you were born in a specific city, state, country, and these are all over the world. Even the World Court judges in the Supreme Court of the United States have our claims of life, live life, and amnesty agreements not to be prosecuted while studying quantum language, because we know it takes a long time to wrap your head around this if we're not here hand holding you. Uh, for the witness, oh yeah, and then once you establish that, who are your parents? Where's your mother's name, your father's name? Uh, you can put down what country they're from or that they're locally born. So you, sometimes people want to really extrapolate on that and go on the history, grandparents, great grandparents. That's up to you though, it's not necessary. For the witnesses of the live birth, now it would be two people who have a claim of life already. You put a picture of you, you put a fingerprint. Now we used to do DNA, blood, saliva. They, if you're going to do the, the, the blood, and take your, take your pictures, you can file your photocopies with the court, with your paperwork, if that's what you want to do when you do a lawsuit. But don't ever take a live saliva or live blood on a, on a real piece of paper and filed it into a court as a postmaster because you'd be arrested by the postal inspectors by the as a biohazard against the court as a threat and they will throw you in jail for it. They used to accept it, but then somebody had to figure out a way to stop it. So they, once AIDS came out, they said, well, everybody's got AIDS or some kind of cancer cell in their blood. And it's on the paper and I can't touch it. Now they got signs up at every clerk's office in the United States saying, we will not accept anything with blood or saliva. You've seen it if you've ever been to court. So we tell people you can take scotch tape and put a human hair on there. That's got us all three billion DNA codes on. You can clip in of your fingernails for all that shit, you know? <laughs> you can put the blood on your original one, but then run it through a laminator. First make your photocopies, but take the real blood or the real saliva that's on the real piece of paper and laminate it. It'll be sealed. That way it's always there for posterity. And that you throw in a vault and never take that out unless anybody challenges. Make about 20 copies. When you put that postage stamp on here, though, it costs up for a $1 postage stamp. Do not photocopy postage stamps. That's counterfeiting federal money. You will get yourself in trouble for that little stuff. So make all your copies first. Then go out and buy your $1 stamps and put them on all your copies. Keep your, your last one. You know, you can sign all your stamps. And then make sure you turn it over and endorse the top of the back where you have the stamp on the front. That way it's, a, it's an equity document. It has value. Just like you cash a, cash a check at the bank. And then you auto, everybody autographs and fingerprints for your witnesses. And now you've got yourself a legitimate claim of a life. 
and Russell did this to get his passport. He did it for his wife, and he did it for his daughter, who's born at home, doesn't have a social security, and his social and the passport people gave him a passport for his daughter. So you do it for your children now. Yeah, and you are over over 18. If you're under 18, you can do it for them, and you can send that claim of the life in. It's recognized by the passport people. Yeah, no birth certificate. No birth certificate, and therefore they can't monetize it. Then when you turn 65, you don't get Social Security either. So instead of turning in a birth certificate, you do the claim of life for the passport? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And you can, you can get that done. So it's a, a real nice deal. So the claim of life, uh, determining where you were born, does it matter if you were born on an Army base? or a... the, None of that matters. Because mm -hmm. you, you're, you're a foreign vessel docking on this foreign vessel. Okay. It's a planet Earth. It's a vessel on a sea of space. Everything is maritime. Because you're in a sea of space, you're just another piece of cargo on planet Earth being moved around with, with bills of lading. Correct. And if the bill of lading is written in adverb verb, it says nothing. The name of a county, a city, a state, a road, all those things mean nothing. You can use a GPS if you want, yeah. uh, because every single name in the United States is an adjective, is an adjective pronoun or a verb as a fiction. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you're filing quantum language, so you might as well just identify that you're in charge as the postmaster to move that private contract into a location to make private contract with somebody else suing them to perform. If they can't perform, their, their argument is, is, is vacated. Some of the words that you could study are custom house, custom house brokers, clearing houses, Freight way bill, transit way bill, shipping way bill. These will give you uh, a glimpse into the world of ship of shipping, <coughs> and you're all involved in it, whether you like it or not. You're Can you part slow of down it. Or repeat some of that? Yes, uh, custom house, custom house clearing, custom house brokers, freight way bill, switching way bill, transit transit way bill, bills of lading. The book of synonyms will give you all these names. Under under Aryan synonyms, uh, Black's Law Dictionary would get into uh, specifically identifying uh, parts of those names inside something. United States codes. You type in that. They're going to use cross-referencing. Yeah, Title 46, words. Title 49, 1476. I mean, they're just Title 39 is a good one to go through as well. We've syntaxed all those, rewrote all those laws, filed with the postal systems worldwide. We've done all the work on all of those.